Thank you. Thank you. Don't mind me with my robot legs over here. Sorry. You got a belt holder here. Oh. For you. This is this is also new. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, I would say the timetable went about as expected. Um, I think a lot of people were, I, I had mentioned that uh, it was six to eight months of a recovery, but people were forgetting that it was six to eight months post-op. Um, but it's a very long process. It takes a long time for these types of injuries to heal, but it gives you a lot of time to mentally prepare to come back and do something as crazy as this. Uh, so a lot of ups and downs on a recovery like this, uh, a lot of self-doubt and um, but then sometimes you get moments like this, nights like tonight and uh, it makes it all worth it. Jeff Barn with Wrestling Inc. Uh, congratulations today on the big win. Uh, as mentioned, you had an interesting year coming up to this. Are you a little worried that now that you've won the championship, you're going zero to 100 right away with this win? Uh, maybe, but also with the type of preparation that I've done, um, I was very quiet about this one around. And if you guys had only seen the things that I've been doing leading up to today, you would be like, oh, she's been ready for this. And I know I kept it under wraps, but I just really wanted this my my return to be a very special moment not just for me but for everybody else um so it is kind of just jumping right off to the deep end but uh i wouldn't do it if i didn't feel prepared for it hi amy nemity with wrestlejoy first welcome back Chris. thank you we've all missed you very much and we've all been waiting for you to come back um congratulations as well my question to you is, um, Jade Cargill has been on an undefeated streak as the TBS champion, the sole TBS champion since the championship was announced. I'd love to know how you see your reign as TBS champion and how that might be different from Jade's or how you would like to represent the division and the brand as champion. Thank you. Um, I would say, you know, uh, aim for the stars and just hopefully I could have a reign as long as hers and if that doesn't happen just I want it to be fulfilling not just for me but for the company for the fans I want everything that I do to mean something and um, it's I don't want to say it's been a long time coming but you know I had to blow out two knees to get here and um, I a lot of times in recovering from injuries like that and just seeing a lot of people thinking that ACL tears are a death sentence to a career, but not knowing that they aren't anymore, um, it gets to you and, you know, I've, I've said a lot of self-doubt a lot of times, but uh, I'm going to not only prove to everyone that I do deserve to be a champion, but I'm going to also take the time to prove to myself that I deserve to be one. Thank you. Hi, Chris. Denise Salcedo with Instinct Culture. So you mentioned the ACLs, you know, that being a dead, a dead a death sentence, right? Mm -hmm. And not knowing whether or not you can kind of come back from that and having suffered it twice. So with that being said, can you walk us through the mental struggles on top of making sure that you're like ready to come back and that you feel prepared coming back? Sure. Um, so this time it was a lot easier of a journey having gone through it before and originally we thought that it was an ACL and a meniscus tear um, but it was just an ACL and what that means with recovery is that I was in my leg brace walking around two days after surgery not on crutches and with a meniscus, meniscus tear you would not be able to do that so mentally it felt like the progress was a lot more uh, just on a up, upward thing uh, and um, it was a lot easier because I'd been through this like I had said and you know I remember uh, we when it happened we thought it was maybe just a hyperextension 
and then I got the MRI and then I got the results and I read them and I just cried for like three hours straight because I was like, oh, I told myself so many times I did not want to go through this again and I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. Um, but I cried it out, got myself together and I was like, I just got to come back from this. Um, it's not as much, not that it's not a big deal, uh, but if you, you know, if you really want something and you just work hard for it, it'll pay off and yeah, it'll pay off. Awesome. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Uh, Corey Lee with the Wrestling Observer. Now, last year um, was almost a big turning point at this exact um, weekend. Uh, you had that match with Moody Soho at Rampage where the crowd went crazy for you mm -hmm. and were very upset when you did lose. Looking back on it now, going back, obviously, getting off that reaction and then soon, you know, with the knee injury and then coming back tonight and ending Jade's streak, did that kind of cross your mind when you were out here tonight or was it, you know, just, just part of the journey? Uh, everything that we do is part of the journey, I would say. Um, but it did, it did cross my mind thinking coming back to a place where I was like, man, this is... Las Vegas is where I had my first ever main event for AEW, and uh, so many things have changed in one year. Um, I don't want to say it's been a full circle moment, but I remember that reaction from last year, and I was like, man, they do, they really like me, and sometimes you don't always hear it in those moments. Um, like tonight, I could not hear a thing because my mind was just like, oh my god, so much is going on right now, but... Um, you know, when I get to watching me at back, I, I, I'm, I'm very in the moment when I'm in the moment, and then I'll look back on things and be like, wow, you guys, you guys are very good to me. So thank you, thank you, everyone that's here. Here we go. Come on, Brave Nation Radio. You are now the one in 60 and one. Uh, would you want that rematch immediately with Jade, or does she got to work her way back up to get another shot? I would be fine with either, uh, considering I kind of just had my shot tonight, even though it was her second match. Um, but she put the challenge out, and I was the one ready to answer it and overcame it. Um, if she wants the rematch right away, I'm, I'm back better than ever, ready to go. If she wants to take some time off and regroup, also acceptable. I'm all for anybody and anybody coming up and getting a shot at the title whenever they're ready. Two more questions for Thanks. Steve Paul from 10 Count. Now you came out, huge pop, huge pop. Now mm -hmm. I know when wrestlers step away for a little while, they're nervous when they show up, maybe because someone forgot you somehow. But when you came out and the place went crazy, how are you feeling? Oof. All day I was like, man, I cannot wait to get this over with because I have drank so much caffeine today and just sat and just felt my heart. I have like a, a heart rate tracker and it says that uh, it tracked an activity for an hour and I was out there for maybe a minute or two and that's just how much my heart was racing but I was just like, <sighs> I did it to myself but um, yeah, it, it's, ni it's nice to not be forgotten. I, I wouldn't say I was, I feared I would be forgotten because I had constantly seen so much online love for my eventual return. Um, I, I I feared that in my head I didn't deserve to have this big of a moment um, because I haven't been here. I've, I've maybe had about a total of 18 months that I've been gone due to injuries and I was like, I know I work hard. I know I work hard at home coming back from these injuries and I feel so terrible that I can't consistently be on TV because of these injuries, but I know that I'm putting everything that I have into something like this. Um, but tonight definitely proves that it was all worth it and I do deserve it. Last question for Chris, Vickers.
Oh, I was miserable the whole time. Uh, I, especially like, I went through it once and it was totally different world because it was during COVID and we didn't have any fans. Uh, I, I, I did think, I was like, okay, so I already came back coming out of a claw machine one time. How am I going to top that another time? So there was a lot of thinking about that, about like, what can I do to top that? And I, I think this did a pretty good job, but uh, yeah, there was a lot of uh, misery just because of how much I love being here and being on the road and just being a part of something. And uh, it just, it really sucks when you can't do something that you love and just to have it taken away from you. And I would be here as much as I could just to be a part of it and to support everyone. And at first I felt like I was just in the way and I was like, why did I even bother to come here? I, I can't do anything. But then everyone was like, no, 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 we love you. We want you here. I was like, okay, okay. And then now uh, just seeing everyone backstage and seeing the reaction, I was like, man, they do love me. And it's very special. So even when it's very sad, uh, there is always a light at the, at the end of the tunnel. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Don't mind me. All my things.